hello my beautiful people welcome back to my channel from the thumbnail and the title you already know exactly what we're going to be doing here today natasha denona yucca palette is right here in my hands in this video you will see several look tutorials and my first impression final thoughts at the end of this video and as per usual timestamps are going to be underneath this video for you to navigate through if you are new here hi welcome my name is eve i love all things beauty if you find this video helpful and enjoy while watching it and give this video a big thumb up it does help my channel out and i do invite you to subscribe to my channel and now without further ado let's dive in So this is a brand new launch, mid-size eyeshadow palette from Natasha Denone. It's called Yaka. The entire collection included this mid-size eyeshadow palette and three eyeliners. I personally only was interested in this eyeshadow palette. This palette retails for $69. It has a 24-month shelf life and it was made in Italy. The outside packaging looks just exactly the same as the palette itself. I adore this color scheme. I'm really loving that they are stepping out out of their box with the design of their palettes. The palette feels like a soft matte finish. It's really nice to touch. And in the back of the palette, you see those little dots so you can take out all the shades. In the packaging itself, you can see more information about each shade, what they are. And then here's a diagram as well for all the shades and a little bit more information about the making as per usual. I've also received an affiliate code from Natasha Denona, which is Eve 10, that will give you 15% off of your purchase, even including the new collection. I am starting on this eye and I'm going to begin with this neutral shade Valley and I'm using a refer 15 brush and I'm going to start building up my crease so I really want to build up my crease really nicely so that brown shade really comes through and so far I do not experience any difficulty it blends beautifully just what I expected. So today I'm being really, really careful with my eyes because yesterday I was supposed to film this video yesterday and I did not because I made a clear mistake. I sat outside in the backyard to read my book and we have a lot of trees in our backyard. I am now going into this next shade, uh, Gold Flex, and I'm using Singe Beauty E02. I'm going to try to build up my crease here a little bit more, just in this area, specifically creating that arch. So I sat outside in the backyard and we have a lot of trees there and a lot of different plants and stuff. I sat there and read my book and drank my coffee literally for like 20 minutes. And as soon as I came back in the house, my eyes started watering so badly, I could not do anything about it. Literally, I went, I washed my face, I rinsed my eyes, nothing my eyes kept watering for the rest of the afternoon i'm not even kidding so i literally could not do anything about it obviously i could not film very unfortunate but next time i know not to go in the backyard whenever i know i need to film the video now i'm going to go into this shade right here it looks like a really nice matte teal called willow and i'm gonna use cinch e04 and i'm going to start placing it here like i would like to just go ahead and pack this color here i feel like my eyes still waters a little bit so i'm gonna try not to make a scene here i cleaned off the brush on my color switch and i'm just tapping this area blending these together so they look a little bit nice and blended a soft transition now i'm gonna go into this shade acacia so i'm gonna use the same brush i'm gonna start applying it here i am getting a little bit of a fallout here but it does come off with a brush release these shades are beautifully pigmented so i feel like i don't really need to do like a cut crease but it's kind of like a casual cut crease if you will but if you wanted to do a cut crease i think this would be a good look to do that and now i'm going to take a smaller brush and then build up my inner corner and i think i'm going to go into this beautiful bright shade called Kamu Kamu. This is a matte shade again and I'm using the Odin's Eye FR6 brush. It's kind of like a pencil brush but it's just a little bit bigger. Oh how beautiful. What 
a gorgeous shade wow full opacity full pigment impressive oh, this could be like my new favorite shade for the season i'm not even kidding what i like to do is i would like to go with this shade right here that's called citrine i would like to pick it up on my finger like that it has a little bit of brightness put it right here on the lid because that uh, other shade is a little bit too dull and i want a little bit more brightness here so i think i'm gonna do just this i'm improvising this right now i don't have any of these looks planned so now i would like to finish my lower lash line and i think i'm gonna do kind of similar thing i'm gonna go with this shade valley and then i'm gonna go into this shade willow and kind of mix them up I'm gonna take a smaller smudger brush. This is my smudger brush from Ulta Beauty and I'm gonna go to the shade Willow, my beautiful teal. So my eye waters a little bit. It's not at its worst, but it is a little wet spot here in the corner. It's just, there's absolutely nothing I can do at this point. I wanna add a little bit of sparkle on my inner corner and I'm gonna go with this shade, the very first one in the palette, Plantasia. Right here, just a little bit of sparkle here i do not have natasha denona liners uh however i do have very very similar liners from la girl the yellow one is from their neon line a shockwave neon line and this is in the shade screaming and the second one is a teal shade the shade dragon that i've used a lot in my different videos and this is their metallic eyeliner line so i think both of these would work really well it, it would be just your preference i think i'm gonna go with the yellow one because i really want that yellow portion to stand this out. is a finished look with mascara i'm using the stila huge volume and lift mascara And these are all the shades that I used for this look. For the second look, I am going to start with this shade, matte shade called Tipu. And I'm using my Refrain 13 smaller brush. Tap off the excess. It's a nice pigment. However, with Natasha Denona formulas, I always like to go in layers. I feel like they blend easier that way. I'm only gonna kind of go halfway through my crease. So let me also do the lower lash line first. I'm gonna go into this cool tone brown shade called Flax. I'm gonna use E01 from Cinch Beauty. I'm gonna pick it up just on the tip of the brush, tap it off, and I'm gonna place this color all over my lower lash line. My left eye is usually more sensitive than my right eye, so I'm trying to be extremely careful. And now I'm gonna go with my Singe E02, same shade. I want to build up this outer corner. Now I'm taking my smaller brush for my outer corner. This is from a Morphe uh, X Nyan set, FF6. Same shade, just this V right here. I want it to be like nicely concentrated nicely pigmented now i want to go into the shade camu camu i want that all over my lid okay, let me start like this on my lid i almost have a feeling that it would be better if i would apply it on a bright eye primer but it layers nicely I'm going to take my pencil brush, Refer 03, and I'm going to go into this darker shade Flux and build up that outer corner close to my lash line. So now I'm going to take my pencil brush with the remaining of the product, close my eye, and almost like draw very, very so slightly onto here, creating that arch. I definitely want to put something in the inner corner. I feel like I want to do a white inner corner. Unfortunately, I do not have this option in this palette, but if I would create this specific look and to finish it with another palette, I would put a white matte inner corner. This is kind of what I want to do with this look. With this palette, unfortunately, I do not have that option. If I put this look, it's going to be somewhat similar to this. So I am going to use a different palette in this instance because I want this to be inspirational for you. So let me go ahead, pull a different palette that has a white matte in it. And then I'm going to come back to show you the finished look with the mascara. Okay, this is a finished look with the mascara.
Uh, on my waterline, I use the Tattoo Studio Gel Liner from Maybelline in the shade Sparkling Silver. And for my inner corner, White Matte, I used the White Matte shade from Lost in Los Angeles Eyeshadow Palette. This is the final look. Let me know what you think, but I think this might be the favorite so far. I don't know what it is about this palette, but you guys, if you know me, you know that I love my shimmers very much. I love a good matte formula to build up the structure of the looks. However, I absolutely love my shimmers and Natasha Denona knows for sure how to make a good shimmer shade. I am surprised myself to see that I enjoy a good matte look so much. I didn't want to put anything on this eye because I just enjoy the mattes the combination of all the shades and undertones. I think they're so beautiful. And this look, chef's kisses. Not kiss, kisses. This is so beautiful. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, so for this next look, I want to do something warm. So I'm going to start with this shade Fushi and I'm going to use my EO3 from Cinch Beauty. I like the pigment. Definitely no fallout. It seems like that cream to powder formula. Now I'm gonna pick up my Refer 15 blending brush and I'm gonna go into this shade Ixia and build up my crease a little bit better right here. And I'm holding my brush towards the end. So I'm applying very, very minimal pressure on the brush itself. And I'm gonna pick up a little bit more, close my eye and just build up this outer corner. Now on my Refer 14, I'm going to pick up this shade right here called Calathea. And this is, again, a cream to powder formula. I'm going to take Singe E01 and I'm going to go into this shade and this shade. I'm going to mix them kind of together. And now I'm going into this shade Calathea. This is an excellent brush for the lower lash line, the Singe E01, because it's a little bit pointed and it's kind of tapered from all the sides. From any side you look at it, it's tapered. Okay, this is giving me a hard time here, but that's not the eyeshadow, that's my eye. With this look, I do wanna do something sparkly on the lid, and I think I wanna go with this shade right here called Kamarebi. This shade has a little bit of gold, something a little bit warm in it, but also has a green shift. This shade and Plantasia in my inner corner. This has a little bit more orange yellow in it, but I feel like it's very, very similar to the what's on my lid. There is a very slight difference. So let me go ahead, finish the other eye lashes. I think I'm going to throw an eyeliner and I'm going to show you the finished look. This is a finished look with mascara and this pencil in the waterline. This is in the shade Dragon. And these are all the shades that I use, including the liner. I'm gonna try to see if camera will pick up, but these two shades are not the same. They might seem a little bit similar or a lot similar at first, but they are not the same. I'm trying to move my hand so you would see the shift. This one goes from gold to green, and I especially swatched them right next to each other. Especially this way, you would see that they are very different. I enjoy this look very much, and I'm going to be wearing it until the end of the day. So for this look, I'm going to do something a little bit more neutral. This shade is really calling my name. So I'm going to start with this brush FR2 from Odin's Eye Set, and I'm going to go with this shade right here, I think. It's called Valley. And I'm going to do the same shade, but on my lower lash line as well. Now I'm gonna take Cinch E05 and go into this shade called Flex. And I'm gonna build up this outer corner. I'm gonna take the same shade, smaller smudge brush, and intensify this lash line. Now I'm going with my flat brush and I'm going into the shade it's called Elysian. No, it seems a little bit textured and very creamy on the pickup. I don't know, I might need to spray it. Let's see. There's definitely a little bit of a fallout. Look at this, look how foily and sparkly that is. I'm just gonna press it into the lid directly and make that really nice and foily. That's beautiful. If I wanted to finish this look using just this palette, 
I would put this shade in the inner corner. Right now, I do want to do just a simple smoky eye like that. So I'm just gonna use my highlighter. This is the finished look with mascara and I added a liner in the waterline and I just added nice bright icy highlighter into my inner corner and my brow bone. I just wanted to create a very traditional smoky eye that never gets old. These are the three shades that I used. The shimmer shade is absolutely stunning. Now let's take a look at some of the palettes that I have in my collection that I thought could possibly look quite similar. The first palette that I thought about was this Nomad by Juvia's Place. It's definitely a similar vibe of that grungy, a little bit warmer, a little bit cooler color story and like a pop of yellow. I definitely think that you can create some of the similar looks from Yaka palette using this Nomad, but it's not obviously the same color story because also the palettes are different sizes. However, the price difference is also significant between those two. Here's the new Stone and Rock from Odin's Eye and Yako Natasha Denona side by side. There is definitely a similarity right here. This palette is completely new to me. It just arrived to me, so I haven't even touched it. I cannot, unfortunately, compare the quality at this point because, like I said, I haven't touched the palette yet from Odin's Eye, but I am already loving the fact that there is a matte white. The Natasha Denona palette definitely has more brownish, warmer tone shades and this one only has one. Uh, the next palette I have here is Nomad Akavango Safari. I see a lot of similarity between these two palettes. There are warmer tone neutrals, there are cooler tone neutrals, and uh, the sizes are the same. They're both 15 pan palettes. This is my absolute first palette from the brand, and I haven't touched it yet because it literally just arrived to me last night. I am very excited to try this, but these two color stories, I think, are very, very similar. Remember this one? This is a Gemini from Melt Cosmetics. Definitely a vibe, that grungy, some warm tones, some greens. Melt Cosmetics is definitely matte heavy. It's primarily matte eyeshadow powder. There's only two uh, shimmers here, and then not, to my opinion, the greatest quality. Here I have a Natasha Denona Mini Star palette. I wanted to put these two together. This is one of my favorite palettes from Natasha Denona. If you look at those cool tone browns there, they're similar, but they're not the same. The greens are very different. I think these two would be a good complements for each other. And the next palette I wanted to put next to it is the Avocado Toast from BH Cosmetics. There's some warm tones here. There's that beautiful teal shade. There's a variety of greens too, but they're not, again, the same as here. These are more like mustardy, pukey greens, and these are more like true greens. Darker mattes are not the same. You definitely get a similar vibe here, but they're definitely not the same palette. Another palette that I thought of uh, to put right next to the Yaka palette was this Ambience from Ace Beauté. This is a very nice fall palette. These two shades, I will actually swatch them for you guys. They are practically the same. They are so similar, they are almost the same. That's a very, very beautiful shade. I also see that this shade and this shade are very, very similar. For example, like this one and this one. The shimmers in the Ambience palette just as reflective as Natasha Denona's. They're those like bright, full foiled shimmers that I absolutely love. I think this is where the similarity kind of ends. There are a few different formulas here. So there's some traditional Natasha Denona mattes. Then we have a cream to powder. This metallic green gold called Ray is more of your simple metallic eyeshadow, if you will. And then these four shades right here, they are sparkling foil. They were initially introduced in the Love eyeshadow palette. They're very reflective, high shine, very smooth foils. When I saw this color story, I gasped. I hope you enjoyed all the inspirational look tutorials. Let me know which one was your favorite. I also would like to know of your thoughts. What do you think of this launch? What do you think of the collection generally? What do you think of the color story? Are you thinking to pick it up? Or maybe you already have, or maybe you already have something very similar in your collection that you're using instead. Let's chat about all that in the comment section below. Here are my initial final thoughts on the palette. I'm definitely gonna keep this palette handy and create more looks, most probably on my Instagram reels. These are all the colors that I absolutely love. To me, it is beautiful. To me, this is something that 
I gravitate towards. I love all the shades and tones. I love the color story. The quality definitely did not disappoint. And I absolutely love that they included the sparkling foil shimmers here. The ones that are very smooth, they're very reflective. They are very shiny. They look so beautiful in eyes. I really love this almost neon shade and it is a good one too. Here are these two sparkling foil shimmers right here. They are very similar on eyes, but they're not the same. If you actually look at them very closely, they're not the same. And you saw that on the swatches as well. But to my personal preference, I love both of these shimmers. What I would change in this palette is switching one of these shades. To my humble opinion, I would only pick one of these two shades because I think they're a little bit too similar for my liking and I would love to see a matte white, like a really nice, opaque, bright, matte white shade. As far as the depth in this palette, I think that the deeper skin tones are not gonna see much of it. These two shades, I don't think they're gonna be deep enough. If that's you, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts on this, but these are just my initial thoughts on the palette. As a final verdict, I think the quality is really, really nice in this palette. Did not disappoint. All the shades just perform really well. As far as these foily, sparkling foil shades, they are a little bit more textured. So if you really love that full impact, or if you pick up a lot of it, it will most probably crumble under your eye. So spray your brushes or apply it with a finger or just do your eyes first. So one of those options should definitely work. Other than that, I think the quality is very solid. And if you enjoy any of these shades, if this is your range, of colors. If you enjoy this color story, I don't think you will be disappointed. Okay, this sums up my video today. I would love to hear your thoughts or maybe additional questions in the comment section below. Let me know if you've already purchased this palette or you decided to pass on it and what you're using instead. And in case you decided to purchase this palette, I hope you found this video helpful and inspirational. If you enjoy makeup look tutorials, I will leave the playlist at the end of this video in the cards. If you enjoyed this video, give this a big thumb up and I invite you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that already. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next videos.